throne this morning. Come on, hallelujah, Jesus. God, we bless your name, Jesus. God, I give your name the glory, God. Hallelujah. to 
Thank you.
Praise the Lord, y'all. Praise, Praise the Lord. You know, it's, it's been kind of rough for me, you know. But God been making a way. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I'm working, you know. Thank fresh you out of prison, got a job, got my car. Yeah. You know, beautiful family. Yeah. You know, but like I say, you know, it's a lot been... I know it ain't nothing but Satan, though. Yeah. But you know, it's been so much, you know, thoughts as they're running through my head, you know, right. as in, you know, it even came a time, you know, I didn't tell my wife because I didn't want her, you know, stress. But it came a time, you know, I was at work last week. Come on, Doc. And, you know, the, the place I work at, you know, they, they're a Christian-based, you know, company. Yeah. You know, something for pallets and all. Uh, mm -hmm. I was talking to one of the head mans, you know, and, you know, tears just came from nowhere. But I know that it was Satan trying to discourage me, Satan, to give up. You know, you, you know, people always talk me now with y'all got never amount to nothing. You know, I always be in and out of prison. I always be in jail. I'm end up dead. You know, but God changed me. You know, God changed me. You know, and I thank God for the faithfulness, man. You know, for building my faith. You know, helping me strengthen myself and my family. You know, to stay strong in the Lord. You know, regardless of what. You know, even though we wasn't at their church, you know, we, I went to visit my dad's church. You know, last week. So. No, but like I said, we've been in, we spiritually we've been growing. We constantly been growing on God and making a way. And we thank God for that. Yeah. You know, we were looking for, you know, a truck payment. Our truck payment came up. All right. And you know, that's one of the reasons I was stressed and took out like, okay, well my wife can't work, I'm a son, you know, mentally disturbed, autism. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so she had to be there with him. So I'm saying like, how are we gonna pay this truck payment? How are we gonna pay this truck payment? So, you know, the boss man, he didn't come to work. So when he finally did come back to work, you know, he gave me a loan. He said, you know, you take care of this, you know. So I thank God for that. Yeah. Yeah. Let me sing this song for the guys. You know, this is the lady. I'm pretty sure everybody got something they can be thankful for, you know. And I thank God for it. But I'm going to sing this song. Thank you, Lord.
Lord Jesus, thank you for strength. Thank you for peace. Lord Jesus, thank you for allowing us to go through this year, Heavenly Father. You know what we're going through, Heavenly Father, through this pandemic, Heavenly Father. But we thank you for your strength, Lord Jesus. For the children, Heavenly Father, with no fathers, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, touch them right now, Heavenly Father, that they will know that no matter what, they have a spiritual father, Heavenly Father. It don't matter about the, the male being in the house, Heavenly Father, because we got you, Lord Jesus. I grew up, Lord Jesus, without a father, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Been in and out of incarceration all my life. And I tried to commit suicide numerous of times, Lord Jesus. And I'm here confessing it before the church today, Heavenly Father, to let them know that I'm thankful, Heavenly Father, for the change. For the change within, Heavenly Father. I don't walk the same, Heavenly Father. I don't talk the same, Heavenly Father. And I don't hang with the crowd that I'm home with. And I thank you right now, Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Anybody else got a song or testimony this morning before we change over to the service yet? Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I'm glad to be here this morning. As it says, I'm, uh, I was glad when they said unto me. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Come right. to the house of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Amen. Last week, I wasn't in that place. All right. Uh, it was hard for me to come to church Friday and Sunday. Yeah. Uh, but I do want to thank everyone for your prayers uh, for my family <laughs> during this time of bereavement. Yeah. Uh, it has been hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I do know uh, that the Lord will strengthen us yeah. 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 throughout yeah. all of this. I take comfort in knowing that my aunt, you know, was yeah. saved. Yeah. 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 Filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And so I live what she taught, Thank what you, she preached. And so, you know, yeah. in that I can hold a lot of confidence that yeah. you know, we're going we gonna to make it through. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I know that uh, she wouldn't, That's she probably you. wouldn't have wanted us to be all down and yeah. out and things like that. But, yeah. Yeah. you know, hey, in the natural. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> We we all human. We gonna cry. Right. We gonna grieve. Oh, yeah. We gonna, Amen. you know, sometimes even question. That's right. Like, oh, why? Yeah. With such wonderful people, they help mm -hmm. everybody. But you know, it was her and her husband. Yeah. Uh, uh, this COVID thing is uh, is serious. It is. Yeah. Um, it's you. just it's serious. Yeah. And when it hits at your front door, That's when right. it takes a loved one, yeah. it makes yeah. you yeah. look at it a little bit different, yeah. Yeah. different yeah. a little yeah. harder. Yeah. 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 Be a little more safer. Right. Yeah. But I do know that Thank in this you. time, uh, my aunt and I we used to talk all the time, and she poured so much Come on. into me Come on. that I don't even think she understood. <laughs> you know, there was times I would. My let her know and then there was times I wouldn't I would just receive what she said yeah and uh these last few days or whatnot we used to always get on the phone and we joke around and we sing and one of the songs that you know she was singing occasionally was the Jesus in me yeah, yeah. yeah. Jesus in me. come on yeah. and that song this whole week has just been I've been hearing it. I've been yeah. hearing it. And I'm like, Ooh, okay, yeah. she with me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. she yeah. me know it's all good. Yeah. 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 Carry on. Yeah. And it is all good. Yeah. Yeah. Because she don't yeah. have to endure right. none of this stuff <laughs> that, all right. that we got to go yeah. through. Yeah. Yeah. I had to talk myself up out that thing because yeah. normally that's how I handle death. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They better off than we are. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. we got to still yeah. be here and yeah. go do yeah. everything. Thank you, but I found myself in a wreck, mm -hmm. you know, all uh, week and crying and, you know, whatever. Yeah. But yeah. that song, you know, just kept on. So I, I normally don't testify and I normally don't sing in front of a lot of folks. But I will attempt to sing that because yeah. I do. Yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah. 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 That for me, yeah. mm -hmm. the Jesus in you yeah. loves the Jesus in me. Yeah. Yeah. The Jesus. I'm sorry, y'all. Let me start that over because she would be mad. I sang it backwards. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. Yeah. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you.
States wearing yeah. these masks, shutting the church down and everything else. <laughs> yes, sir. But until you have somebody close yes, to you, come on, come on, that's sick and die, come on, or until you have been through that thing yourself, I don't come care on. what nobody says. Come on, come on, I don't care how much faith you got. That's between you and God. If you don't want to live by the rules and laws of the land. That's between you and God. I don't care. That's just y'all. That's right, man. But man, when I was on that bed, I felt like I wanted to die praying God kill me. Yes, sir. Come on. Because I'd rather really just die than take this pain in our man, man. Come on, Doc. I don't know what you don't know what it's like. Hey, this yes, mask ain't doing nothing. You might be right. Yeah. Come on. But for my mind's sake, it do me just fine. Hello. <laughs> and you done been through this thing. Yeah, you got somebody yeah. close to you that died. Yes, sir. Man, that ain't no joke, man. Yes, sir. That, 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 that hit different for some people. Amen. Like I said, but we fought it from everywhere, man. Y'all yes. wearing these masks, all this other kind of stuff. Yes. Man, people so heavily minded, they no earthly good. Yes, sir. But they ain't had to go through that. Yes, sir. You can't, you can't, you can't try to tell somebody how to feel when they've been through something. If you ain't had to go through that, it's the best thing for you to do, man. Keep your opinion to yourself. That's right. Cause somebody tell me I'm crazy, I'm liable to choke somebody out, but you know what I went through around August and July? Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> you know what I had to fight through, man? That's right. That's right. Man, I, I couldn't barely bathe myself, man. I was on, hurt. Y'all seen how I was, lost out of way, looking up there sick as all get. <laughs> and I'm still going through because of that thing, man. Yes, sir. So I understand, yeah. You have to, you're alone. That's right. Yeah. 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 That's right. 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 Yeah, Amen. just last night at work, I had three people leave, and Mama got tested positive. Positive, they had to go get tested. Yeah, man, it's just spreading like wildfire. Yes, it is. You know, everybody 
got these names for somebody said scam demic you know, whatever they call it whatever it's mess that they be saying yeah. one thing that i know for sure i don't know if it's real i don't know if it's fake i don't really care i know it hurt yeah. <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs> it's real to me yeah man because <laughs> we'd have been through it man so i appreciate the testimony uh, like she said let's please use caution yeah. i thank god for for the Lord directing the pastor to man to be cautious about this thing. He ain't, That's right. He ain't so heavily minded. He ain't out yeah, there just, well, I got faith. We ain't going to be a church word of mouth. I thank God for him having wisdom Amen. enough. Amen. Hello. We have to try Amen. to separate Amen. folks and shut this thing down when it got bad. I yes. appreciate what he did. Yes, Lord. You know what I mean? Because some of these pastors making their churches not wear this stuff. People sing us all get out scared to admit it. Yes, yes Jesus. Man, hey, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yes, Lord. Don't get been through it. Yes, Lord. Anybody else got a song or a testament? Yeah, Brother Will. Come on. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. My God, my God. First of all, I want to um, thank God for me being here this morning. Yes. And I also thank God for today letting me be here 48 years on this earth. Come on. Yes. And I want to say 2020 has been like an up and down year. Yes. I lost my mother early. I've lost loved ones that was close to me. And yes. I was at a point like a month or two ago where I was just down there asking God, why are these things happening? Why am I losing close people? Why am I losing yes. loved ones? And yes. It was like a, like a depressing state yes. for a while. Yes. And I was like, God, I got to get out of this. This ain't, yeah. Yeah. this ain't working for me. Yeah. So I just started to pray and pray and pray. And pretty soon it seemed like a light just came on inside of me. Yeah. And God was like, it's like, just put me back on the right yeah. road. Because I was at a point where I said, I'm not going to church. I'm not going back to church. Because, yeah. you know, sometimes things happen in your life and you just get depressed. Yes, sir. You feel like God is punishing you. Because it's happening so steady and so fast. Yes, sir. And I just got back on the right track. And it's like a light went off. And I mean, ever since then, I've been happy. God's kept me on the right yes, road. Yes, you yes. know, I have no worries, no depression. Yes, That's all I have. Thank <laughs> you. I appreciate that testimony. I think that. I don't know if anybody remember that message, Brother Leonard preached. I remind him about it all the time. That thing keep me through when you're getting close to the cross. The more you go through, I remind myself, I must be, I'm talking about it right there, close, rubbing up against it. What we going through? Yes, sir. <laughs> that yes, kept sir. me, man. That has been keeping me for the past couple of months, man. I go through something. I know that I'm getting closer and closer yes, sir. to God and the devil's trying to do everything he do to discourage us, man. Yeah. So I appreciate him keeping the faith. That's rough losing the love, and I've never lost a parent. I probably y'all gonna have to probably carry me about. I'm telling you, I'm gonna be gone. <laughs> I lose one of my parents. I know I ain't gonna make it. I don't God. think I'm gonna make it. I barely met her when I lost yeah. my auntie. That was my heart down. Yeah, that was rough for me. That yes, I had a rough time trying to get over that. Yes, but I thank God for him being that, having enough strength to come and get back in church, man. That's yeah. the hardest thing yes, to do. Sir. It's easy to fall. Yes, sir. Man, it's hard to get back yes, up. Man. It's yes, easy to get out there. It's yes, hard to come sir. back. Yes, sir. But real quick, I'm I asked my cousin over here, man. She would give us a testimony. We thank God for her presence yeah. this morning. Yeah. It's so good to see her. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> praise God. I did not expect to get called out, but praise God. I thank God for being here this morning. Um, uh, oh my God. <laughs> but no, I ain't gonna say that. I ain't gonna say that at all. But I, I do thank God for being here on this morning. Um, it has been a while since I have seen my family, but I am most definitely grateful and thankful to be here. I did text my pastor and first lady and let them know that I'll be back Amen. in service after the first because I do want to spend time with family. I wasn't able to be here for Christmas because of the fact that I had some work, but you know, up until after the first, I will most definitely having my family time. So I just thank God for being here and for seeing all y'all. So God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I appreciate her this morning. Anybody else got a testimony before we change order? Thank you. I feel like there's one more in there. I know somebody else got something to say for the Lord. I feel like you're sitting down on a testimony. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Y'all forgive me for my... You all right? You all right? Hallelujah. 
I would just like to say, give an honor to God who's the head of my life. And it's an honor always and a pleasure to be in the house of the Lord. And especially with my family. I'm so blessed and honored to be a part of the Lynch family. It's an honor. Oh, yeah. um, I feel so bad because I worked Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. So, unfortunately, I didn't get to taste no kind of Christmas, nothing. <laughs> but it's okay, though. It's okay, though. Um, I told my job, I said, well, I'm going to work. I said, but I ain't working New Year's Day. Yeah. I said, because I plan on spending New Year's Eve with my family. Amen. I said, so y'all might not even think about telling me to come because I'm not coming. Yeah. So they was, oh, no, if you come Christmas, we, we will honor. We make sure you are. But I want to tell y'all that, you know, like you said, this thing with this COVID is so real. I lost a cousin yeah. two weeks ago. And she, like, she, like, like, the young, like she said, she suffered in the hospital. and. Yeah. I thought she was home. Didn't even know she was still there. Yeah. They called me, tell me she's dead. Oh, that blew my mind. Yeah. But she caught pneumonia. And then she already had a breathing problem. So I'm saying to say this. My age alone, I'm 62 years old, God. On, bless man. the Lord. And I'm an asthmatic. Come on. But I give God the honor and the praise because Thank you, Jesus. He has not let it touch me. Amen. And I've been around yes. situations, not with yes. too much people, but people who, like I said, the way I work, like I told y'all before, uh, oh, gee, they, they keep closing those campuses down. Yes. But we're in the group home, praise God. But still, yes. the thought of knowing that, you know, yes. these people are still coming to work, bringing this stuff, yes. don't care. don't. Even at my job, I, I saw something this week, and I said, listen. <laughs> Why y'all don't have these masters on? I told the staff, I said, this is ridiculous. Y'all sitting here, y'all are 22-year-old guys acting like it's a game. I said, these boys here, I said, y'all better, I said, I'm going to start right there by you because I've had enough. All I right. said, y'all sitting here, I said, don't come, don't come breathing on me. I got to take care of Sister Doreen. Yeah. Yeah. I know how old I am. I know what's going on with me. Yeah. You know, and I don't need y'all to bring that to me, though. But I'm yeah. telling y'all, seek a place of worship. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to say it like this. It's the church to be there. Yeah. When I tell y'all I'm at work, I ain't here. I got, I got my own care to the boys. Leave me alone. I, cut, I put it on my phone. I'm at my desk looking at church. I'm still getting my service in. I'm telling y'all. But I just want to tell y'all, I love y'all so much. And I want to tell my nephew, I ain't broke. <laughs> I use wisdom. <laughs> I made sure that I said, you speak that. Let me tell you like I tell Sister Lil time, I'm a millionaire. Yeah, right. Okay? Yeah. So I, I tell myself that all the time. I'm a millionaire. Yeah. I ain't broke. Yeah. You better yeah. speak that thing in your life. Yeah. And, sooner, yeah. and, and sooner than later, yeah. some things are going to manifest. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. That's okay? Right. That's all I'm going to say. But I love y'all. And those of y'all that know the word of prayer, please keep me in your prayer. They promised me on Friday again that I only got two more weekends to work. They hired somebody. So y'all, please let this be real. Yes. <laughs> and I'm so tired of going to work, work on the week. I miss y'all so much. Yes. I look forward to knowing Friday night, Sunday, I can see my family. Yes. Oh, my God. Y'all yes. don't know. Yes. I live for that. Y'all yes. just continue to keep me in your prayer that I'm the door that God is calling. Yes. Amen. Amen. One thing I know for sure, if she ain't broke, I ain't broke, so I'm happy that you ain't broke. I know she's gonna take okay. care of me. I'm no, no. <laughs> I ain't mad at it at all. I'm good. <laughs> Before the pastor comes, man, I bring on First Lady. Y'all, y'all do me a favor, y'all. Anybody know what December the thirtieth is? I know she' about it's to kill. Special day. Oh, it's Anybody know what day that is? Wonderful day. That is the first lady's birthday. Yes, yes. And I know for sure. I know. I know. I say this all the time, but I know for sure. At some point, we can just we can just we can just start with twenty twenty. We ain't got to go back. I know. At some point in this year, she has blessed you in some kind of way. And I don't even know if they've done it personally. I don't even know. I don't even get in their business like that. But I just know what kind of people they are. That's right. That's right. So I know if you done came in contact with them in any kind of way. They done blessed your soul some kind of way in 2020. Yes, yes, yes. And I know it's after Christmas, but I want y'all to please try to do something next week for her, man. Try to do something for her birthday. Give her a look. She loves money, man. Oh, oh, yeah. Wow, that was go a long way. Yeah. Don't you let her fool you. She said she modest back there, but she yeah, loves the money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, she ain't she ain't like Brother Lennon. You can give Brother Lennon five dollars, he's straight. You know, you can give him two or three dollars, he's thankful, he's straight. Oh my god. I know if she understands you just ain't got it. But if she know you got a hundred dollars, you give her five. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ron. She gonna, she gonna look at you sideways. I'm trying to tell you, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But she deserves it. She worth it. You know, she she deserves anything that we give her. She deserves making that extra round. She deserves that sacrifice because she's been faithful for years. I haven't seen her tell. I don't even think Daddy know where his underclothes at. That's right. I don't think he know where his socks. I bet I guarantee you he can't just go in there and dress himself. Pick out no suit. I'm being real. I'm being real. He, I, I guarantee you. Mom do everything. And I done traveled with her for years, lived with her for years. He ain't never had her just wake up, go try to show two clothes and clothes. I'm it's laid out every day. Every day. You know, every day. And that's the kind of woman she is. He never had a woman for absolutely nothing. Down to his drawers. I just keep it real. I just keep it real. Down to his underwear. You know, that's the kind of woman she is. And that's the kind of man that they raise. They raise us boys and girls. Man, we know how to, man, we know how to take care of our woman. We good. This woman is never know how to take care of their man. We didn't see for 30 and 40 years. Yes, sir. I was telling Junior Dollar back there, girl, don't settle for nothing. You, you, you were the real man now, baby. Oh, yeah. You better say so. You better live. Yeah, we went to the store, okay? You ain't, you ain't got to shop at the clearance, right, baby? Come on. Over. <laughs> That's my choice. But hey, you were a man now, baby. You get the finest thing. That's how I was raised. You good now. I don't know, I don't know what you're having for, but I know it ain't better than me. I ain't ready. <laughs> And that's the way it's supposed to be because she deserves it. You understand what I'm saying? She did, she deserved that thing, man. She didn't build me when I was sick. She didn't seen the worst of the worst. That's right. I know I was rough when I was sick, but I know I was stinking rough. Didn't take a bath. I know it. You no, know, she stayed right there. Got sick herself trying to take care of me, man. My kids don't want for nothing. I don't want for nothing. Thank you, Jesus. You know, so she deserved that, man. We got to start appreciating it. Yes, one thing about it, I learned, I know I'm rambling, I'm finna go, but one thing I learned, man, when you take care of your woman. Hello. Come on, take care of you. I was talking to a woman at work last night. I ain't finna do it. I ain't do it. I said, let me tell you something. If you got a man that's taking care of you, the way you supposed to be taking care of, man, a woman to go above and beyond. That's right. Yes, to make sure you good. If you do right. what you're supposed it to do as a man, right. you ain't got right. nothing to worry about. Amen. And I'm just being real, man. Amen. I appreciate it. I like that she looking good, too. Mm -hmm. I'm going to I see you, girl. She's going to kill me. Yeah. But I thank God for her, my mama, this morning. Man, at this time, we're going to ask Brother Leonard, if he would, the pastor, to come on around and Bring the first lady on, man. Y'all give me a hand, Captain. Hey, we looking sharp too. Hey, hey, hey. I'm gonna appreciate the Lord this morning. I'm gonna appreciate what you feel. So thankful, uh, God has blessed us to be here another year, and this is the last Sunday in this month. And, and again, I know we say it all the time, and I know y'all might get tired of hearing us saying it. But from the depths of our hearts, we do thank y'all for giving us the opportunity to help y'all grow spiritually and for y'all to come to church every time the doors open and fellowship and be with us and give us that opportunity to minister to your lives. And we can't thank you enough for allowing us to do that because as we have said all along, that without you all, we, we won't be able to do what we do. And so we just really, really, really want to thank you all from the depths of our hearts for giving us the opportunity to minister to you all and for us to fellowship and work together. And of course, uh, Sister Trina will be making announcements, but just to remind you all next Thursday 
for the New Year's Eve service. Uh, we're going to be having just an open mic. You'll be able to share what the Lord has done for you all this year. And we know we have some testimonies. And we know we have some people that went through some difficult times this year. Yes. And that's all a part of life. That's right. And just like they're talking about death, you know, really, death is just as much a part of life as life itself. But but we just something that we have to learn to deal with, learn to face head on, because it's going to happen. You know, it's going to happen. You cannot avoid death. Some people young, some people old. You know, just like now we're praying for my son-in-law. His little two-year-old niece had got backed over by a car about three days ago, three, four days ago. We cannot take things for granted. We must always try to keep our hands in the Lord's hand. Because you never know where it's at and where it is. And as she was saying earlier, you know, as she said, there's so many people that have that person to go into that coronavirus area in the hospital and never see them. And sometimes they stay in there and die and they never have a chance to tell them goodbye. So therefore, we're trying to tell you all, even next uh, month on the 12th, which I think is the second Friday, as we've been mentioning, we're going to have a relationship class. And we're going to do that for everyone that's 18 and above. And we, that's for everybody, even if you ain't married yet. You might want to get some instructions. You might want to get some wisdom. You might want to get some knowledge. But God is wanting to give us some instructions on how to keep our families together. And we're going to be giving you classes based upon the Bible relationship ways. We ain't going to be telling you that a man is supposed to marry a man and a woman supposed to marry. I'm going to tell you right now, that ain't the Bible. We don't go along with it. And we're going to tell you the truth. You won't be blessed with a man and a man and a woman and a woman. You ain't going to be blessed. We want you blessed. We're going to tell you the truth. Amen. Amen. Also, we heard that Brother Ernest, would you stand up for a second, please, sir? We heard that his uh, a cousin's trailer burned down yesterday. And we got a list back up there on the wall of their shirt size for the male and for the female. And so if you do have something, make sure you get Brother Ernest's number. Because we want to try to get them some items. If you got anything other than clothes that you want to give to the family, make sure you give with Brother Ernest. We want to let him be the point of contact. So everybody will be trying to get all this stuff together and let him be the point of contact. And if you just look at that list back then, they got the shirt signed, the clothes signed, and got anything else you want to give, please make sure you do that. Contact Brother Ernest. Uh, we just want to make sure we reach out to the families. Amen? Amen. So we thank you so very much. And again, Sister Leonard is going to be preaching here in a few minutes and we thank her so much i love her to death you know uh that that's my heart man and yes, brother tyrone says yes, when we have time i'll tell you a testimony that happened last year when i tried to go buy me some underwear and got the wrong size because i wasn't used to buying them and she told me while she was saying baby that ain't your size you know but according to me being a man yes, sir. you know yes, sir. i don't know how to buy me some underwear of course when i got there i had to you know what I mean? But it was too bad. She tried to tell me. But hey, I ain't used to doing it. Yes, sir. But it's a sweet thing. Marriage is sweet when you got somebody that loves you and somebody that loves you back. Amen. Amen. We thank you all again. We thank you. I love you, honey. By the time Ron talking about being broke, I know Sister Law says she don't be broke, but I will be broke on the 30th. Amen. <laughs> How many know it's no secret what God can do? Yeah, it is no
first, Father, because you are worthy of that. Father, we thank you for your love and your salvation, Father. We thank you for the anointing and the spirit that we feel even in the midst of us, Father. Yes, and God, we ask you today to let this word stir up our pure minds and our heart as it stirred me, Father. God, help this word be able to feed your people as it fed me, Father. Lord, I just don't want to thank uh, be a minute without you or a day without you or a second without your, you and your spirit, Father. And I thank you for your love, Father. And Lord, we ask you to bless each and every one that's here today. God, bless their coming and their going. Lord, send your angels before them, God, and be with them, Father. In your name we pray, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Help me sing this prayer. You did all the me.
my praise. Heaven know he's so worthy to be praised. Come on, give him a hallelujah this morning. Hallelujah, don't you love him? If you would just praise him just a minute. Hallelujah. Heaven know he's so worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Oh, give him a hallelujah this morning. Hallelujah. I'm going to sing this little praise. I keep hearing this and I'm going to get on out the way. Status is changed. No more decline. I'm on my way to a better day. My status is changing. No more decline. I'm on my way to a better day. One more time. My status is changing. I'm on my way She said, I want to let you know it ain't be long before you get it. And I told her, I said, you know I'm going to get a black one. She said, no, you ain't going to get no black lessons. You have to get another color. And we back and forth fussing. Why? Because my status is changing. You know, I ain't accept. And I don't, when God speaks something, it's so. And so you know what I've been doing? I've been riding in my black lessons. It's coming. But you got to accept your status. But it got to be a change in you to want to make you accept it. When you get the Holy Ghost, you don't see things as they are. And you know what I said? I'm going to take my black glasses. Well, I said for red if that's what the person want to get for me. And she said, I just want you to be ready. To go to the car like she ain't said nothing about no used Lexus. Right. She said, I'm gonna bless you with a new Lexus. Yes. Now I don't know about you. You might be sad today, but I got some joy. Because you know what? God is gonna bless in the midst of all this trouble. God is gonna bless and stand up for his people. Yes. So guess what, y'all? I'm gonna go, I'm going from a 200 to a Lexus. Now how about my status is changing. Right. And guess what? I ain't gonna have no car note either. You said what you're saying? I said I'm speaking it to the I ain't gonna have no car note. Now if you want a car note, you go right on ahead, but I ain't gonna have one with this. Right. And guess what? My house coming next. You know, I, I thank God for the blessings of the Lord. You know, last week I ain't gonna tell you who the family was. They put an envelope in Brother Leonard's hand. And Brother Leonard didn't tell me till I got home because I probably would have just hugged and I'm not the, the family down. But I just want to thank you for your blessings. God is a good God. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for giving to us. And now you know you don't take life for granted when people do something for you. I don't take it for granted. But I want to tell you out there that your status 
gonna change. All you got to do is put your trust in him. Oh, he won't pour. You know what the Lord showed me this morning on the way to church. He said, I'm gonna get in the message, but I'm gonna say this real quick. He said, What we've been trying to do is save folks. We've been trying to mix the Holy Ghost with our flesh. Alright. This is what this is what he showed me. Come on, brother, and help me with this. He said, what we've been trying to do, and that's what's hindering us. Pull that all into that bottle. He was telling me that all and water, sin and the Holy Ghost don't mix. No. You can't mix the Holy Ghost and sin together. You wonder why you've been, you've been held back on your blessings. Come on. He said, this is what we've been trying to do. He said, no matter how, yeah, just about feeling it, put a little bit more in there. He said, no matter how we shout, how we praise him, how we dance, you can't mix sin, that's enough, up with the Holy Ghost. He said, this one, you know, and he gave me a message, ready or not, here I come. He said, what we've been doing is, we feel good in the spirit. Sometimes when you're around the spirit, you can feel the spirit, that don't mean the Holy Ghost is in you. See what I'm saying? And what we've been doing is, we've been around it. Give me some music, brother. Lay your hand on me, Jesus. I don't lay your hand on me, Jesus. Lay your hand on me, Jesus. Lay your hand on me, Jesus. Come on, give me some music. Lay your hand on me, Jesus. Get around the spirit, you feel the spirit. Come on. But as soon as you settle down, right. that oil gonna come right back up to the top. Right. He said, "What we've been doing, we we've been mixing the Holy Ghost. We don't want to give up nothing." All right. But God said He coming back for a church without spot yeah. and without blemish. Yeah. You want the fullness of His blessings. Yeah. You want the fullness of Him, but you've been trying to mix Him. Yeah. Cause you don't want to give up you. And the Lord said, now, on my way to church, he said, stop by the store and get a little oil in the water, in the water and mix it. He said, because when that settled down, That's right. that oil going to come all the way back up to the top. Come on, man. Mm. My God. You can't mix. Mm -mm. You can't do what you want to do. Mm -mm. No. Live any kind of way. And said, God, the state, he said, I don't do well in an unclean temple. But he took note, he told me, ready or not, here I come. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to Revelation, the 20th chapter, and the 11th verse. You can't play around with this no more. The time I had when I was 20 years old. We don't have that time no more. We don't have time to just say, well, I, I'm, I'm young. I'm going to do what I want to know. Them, them days is over with. Amen. And I saw a great white throne. And him that sat on it, from whom face the earth and heaven, and the heavens flee away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small, and great stand before God, and the books were opened. My high. Woo! Yeah. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. Mm -hmm. And the dead was judged out of those things which were written in the book according to their works. Yeah. Do you know that everything that you do, if you ain't getting it on the blood, that God is just writing it down? That's right. What is a good work? Right. Was a bad work? You know what? About, one thing about God, He don't He don't forget it. No. Now let me tell you the secret to this. Now, if you you if you get your sins remitted, He won't even remember no more. That's right. When you ask God to forgive you, Hallelujah. you wipe your slate clean, yeah. so that all your past sins, God just wipe them out. Yeah. He don't even remember it no more. Come on now. A lot of times, when the Lord spoke to me and told me that we hmm. don't forget it. All right. And a lot of times, because of sin, we beat ourselves up. And sometimes we go back and we take, uh, we go back to it and we begin to participate in the things that God has forgiven us, has been given us for. 
But a lot of times we don't want to let it go. What is so important in your life? What thing in your life is so important that you cannot let it go? Mm -hmm. Now there's some things, some habits we deal with that God gonna help you with. Yeah. But there's some things too that we can we can let them go. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It, it's a place that you know we can't make provisions for the flesh. But let's let's keep finish reading this. And it says, which is the book of life, and the dead was judged out of those things which were written in the book according to their words. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they was judged every man according to their works. Yeah. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into a lake of fire. Let's go to Revelation 22 and 12. And behold, I come quickly. My reward is with me. Give every man according as his work shall be. Yes, Lord. He said, I'm coming quickly. Yes. Now, we don't know when he's coming, but the Bible clearly tells us that he is coming. Yeah. And he said, when I come, I'm coming quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, uh, go, why we, I'm talking, go with me to Mark, the 13th chapter in the 31st verse. I would be, he began to, to deal with me about the five wise and the five foolish. All right. How, you know, sometimes in your flesh of mind, you think you got time because you feel yeah. like that because you're grown and you got a right yeah. to do what you want to do. Now, God gave us a choice to do what we want to do, but he is God. Yes, he, is. he is your creator and your maker. Yes. And sometimes you can't do what you want to do because you're big enough to do it. Because right. he, he's writing it down. I would hate to get before God mm -hmm. because I can't forgive somebody. All right. Because I can't let something go. Yeah. And I get before him. And let me tell you something. When your hour will come, you may not have time to get some stuff straight. That's right. That's the five right. foolish, Amen. when the bridegroom came, That's right. they did not have time to get no. oil in their lamp. No. He said, what is all the Holy Ghost? They did not have time to say, well, Father, I, the, 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 the groom is coming. Lord, feel yeah. me. Yeah. Get yourself filled now. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. You want to, you know what takes you from, the word, that would restrain you from sin? is the Holy That's Ghost. Right. It yeah. checks you. The Bible said, when a comforter come, yeah. which is the Holy Ghost, it's going to teach you and lead you and guide you into all things. It's going to lead you into the spirit of truth. Yes. You wonder why you can't make it, you can't let that thing go. you got to get some oil in yes. your lamp. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. If you don't get oil, you, you ain't going to be ready, I'm telling you. You know what? Hmm. Let's be honest. Without oil, now at night, when I met, I think it was two years ago, the power went off for three days. And Lord had already told, told me, he said, now get some oil lamp, get some lamps and flashlights. And he said, that way y'all will be able to see. And I began, I didn't have to panic. He gave me a dream before. In the dream, I mean, uh, a storm went through Dothan. And I was just like, God, I got to get, at the time Kmart was open. I said, God, I got to get to Kmart. And he spoke to me in the dream. He said, and I saw the saints just screaming, oh, we got to get to Kmart to get some oil in our, for our lamps. Right. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, you already got oil in your lamp. Just go home. Mm -hmm. You're already ready. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. In the dream, that's what he told me. He said, you already got oil in your lamp. And I can see the saints, Christians. Yes. Do you think these virgins, what, didn't, didn't, they believed in God? Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. You know and what makes it so beautiful that Jesus was telling this story? That's right. He was telling and warning. And at this time, the disciples, they didn't have the Holy Ghost. God was telling him. They, 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 I bet they would say, what is he talking about? Because at the time, they had went up into the upper room. Mm -hmm. They hadn't received the spirit of God. You know, they was around the northern, but the northern, the northern was yet in them. Yes, and so, and at the time, Jesus was talking about the five wise and the five, the, uh, the five wise and the five foolish. They were like, wow. Mm -hmm. But when the Holy Ghost 
When they went in, 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 in on the days of Pentecost, when they got the Holy Ghost, oh, then yeah. they can understand and write about the very thing that he yes. was telling them about. Hallelujah. That you've got to get some oil in your lamps. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In order for you to get yeah. over your sins. Yeah. That's right. Come on. Come on. I had to do it. Yeah. You got to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Until I made them out, I, I got saved at 16. I was struggling. Come on. Some things I did not want to give up. All right. And I'm like, God, why can I give up this? Why can't I? You know what the Lord told me? He said, because you ain't got your mind made up. All right. My God. You catch a person that want to be a doctor or a lawyer. Yes. Right. Before they start that journey, they know it's going to take them about 12 to 15 years right. to right. get to where they need to be. Right. So what they do from a 15, 16, you already know, hey, I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to be, you ain't going to wake up one morning and say, well, I'm going to be a doctor and I'm going to be a lawyer. Come on, man. That's right. Come on. You have to make up your mind and tell yourself whether my friends go or not, this is the goal that I want for my yeah. life. Yeah. And what they do, a lot of them achieved it. Yeah. Why? They had to make up their mind. Right. But when it comes to Jesus, you got to make up your mind. Who do you love the most? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Do you love that little thing that you can't give up? Mm. Do you realize that hell is eternity? It is. And that the stuff that you're doing now, all that stuff going to pass away? That's right. And that Jesus Christ is forever? My and I said, God, you mean you got a book? He said, I got a book and I'm writing it down. Because we can't give up that boyfriend. Hallelujah, Jesus. We can't give up that girlfriend. Hallelujah, Jesus. Having sex without outside of marriage. Because you can't give it up. Because you love it more than you love him. God. You can't do it. Mm -mm. You can't I, you can't some things you can't get around. <laughs> it's just certain things that you got to tell yourself. Do I love God more than I love this? All right. And guess what? God will let you do it. He will. Yeah. But in the time of trouble, do you know in the Bible, it Thank said you. God will laugh at yes. your calamities. Yes, it Let's read. Thank you, Jesus. Did I say Mark 13 and 31? Mm -hmm. It said heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word shall not pass away. It said, but of that, but of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye for ye know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man journey, taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his works and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh at evening, at midnight, at the clock crowing or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. Yeah. What I say unto you, I say unto all. Watch. Yeah. Now he ain't talking about me by myself. He ain't talking about the pastor. No. About Himself, he ain't talking about the bishop and the prophets and the uh, uh, the apostles. He's talking about everyone. That's right. Whatever you, you know, God give us all a talent. Thank you, Jesus. Every one of us, uh, God got a big, big a built-in talent. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Brother Billy yes, Lord. can preach. He will preach, but uh -huh. can't nobody usher like Brother Billy. I'm telling Amen. you. Amen. <laughs> Some people got a gift. To do certain Amen. things. Now his gift yeah. is the the usher of this church, and them tell you, I watched him. Mm -hmm. When he back there, he like he, he looking at everything. Everybody. 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 Some fall on the floor. Let some fall on the floor. And I'm telling you, kids, don't tell them fans that he watching you. <laughs> 
Now, Sister Manny, the other week, I'm telling it on her. All right, now. She was in there eating crackers in church. No co-sign. No co see, that, but see, I'm telling you something. But you think it's funny, but this is his part of his guilt. And so he's acting in his calling, which is one of his talents. That's right. Now he got many more talents. Right. Now some people God gave one talent to because right. he know you was lazy right. and you ain't gonna do nothing. Right. So but others he gave two or three talents to because right. he know they're gonna get the job done and they can uh, do more than one thing at one time. Right. So brother Billy comes and he taps Sister Minnie on the shoulder. <laughs> he says, Sister Minnie, we ain't gonna have no eating in this church. Right. I'm the head usher. And you better eat another cracker in this church. <laughs> and you know what? And Sister Minnie gonna sit there in church now. Brother Bill, I ain't ate now one cracker. No, he said, now Sister Minnie, we got you. We record you and got you on him. <laughs> he said, because I know you're gonna run back and tell it, but you can't. And she couldn't even talk her way out of it. Why? He's acting in his calling. Come on, See, so his gift Right. And so what God do, he'll take, because he's acting in his call. God going to say, okay, yeah. Brother Bill is doing good in this Come gift. on, yeah. all right. Okay, I asked Brother Bill to minister. Okay, Brother Bill didn't run from his gift. Yeah. So I'm going to add a, another gift on top of that gift. Yeah. Why? Because he's acting in his ability. In his Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, okay. And so, uh, so you know how some of it, us is. Come on. Ooh, talk about it. I remember the Lord spoke to me. He said, prophesy. And I'm like, God, I don't want to do that. All right. All right. Come on now. Come on. They ain't going to like me. Come on. If I tell them what you showed me, uh -huh. they're going to judge me. Uh -huh. He said, either you do what I tell you to do, I'm going to take what's yours and give it to another. All right. You said, God, yes, he will. He'll take what you got and give it. Just like he did Saul. He told Samuel, don't pray for him no more. Right. I told Saul to get to that camp, kill everything in the camp. Because you know what Saul did? All right. He said, don't bring none of it back. Let's get rid of it all because it's a curse thing. Yeah. So we want to take a something that's cursed and want it to be blessed. You can't take what God cursed and turn around and want it to be blessed. Can't do it. Can't do it. My God. To what God did. My God. He right. took what Saul had. Yeah, yeah. And he gave it. If he gonna take your talent today and give it to somebody else, cause you too lazy to do what he tell you to do, you won't stand up for righteousness. Yeah. But you think that if you get up here, you too cute. If you mess up, come on now, have mercy. So. Come on now. Oh my God. Help us, Lord. Feel like you gonna mess up? What's your, this is what training ground. You mess up. Right. Pick yourself back up. Right. First message I preach. I preached three minutes. If I got through three minutes. Hello. But I said, God, if this is what it takes me to I'm going to obey you, you obey God and don't worry about nobody else. If God tell you, say, Jesus what? And so now you say, Jesus what? And you do what he tell you to do. That's right. That's right. We won't increase. But you know how you get into the spiritual man got to increase first. And the natural man will naturally be blessed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But we want to get around. Jesus. The Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. you got to be born again. Got to. I don't believe in preaching on both sin. Come on. That ain't my job. Come on. That's his job. Yeah. I'm a woman that know how to stay in her place. Yeah. I ain't got the, the spirit of Jezebel where I'm going to come up here and tell you. But you know, no, no, no. It's just wrong with churches now. These first ladies just go too far sometimes. Right. Need to stay in their place. Right. Some first ladies, they, they run the church. You ain't God ain't put you to head. He put the man to head. And you need to know your place. All right. yes. Yes. And that's why people don't come to church. All right. You come to church high first. Like you're nasty. Got a nasty spirit. You think you're a big guy. You put your... Oh, let me... Oh, let me... Lord, and sometimes we go too far. Yeah. We say things that's offensive. Amen. One thing about it now, you'll take rebuke from him, but it's hard taking it from me. Yes. Because right. I ain't the one supposed to be rebuking you. All right, oh, oh, wow. Yeah. Jesus. I'm a, and you keep messing with me in the church all the time. Yeah. Post can't trust you. Right. 
Go tell First Lady Summons all go to church. Come to church, everybody looking at you like, mm. Oh, what is I know what you've been doing. Yeah. 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 And they ain't got to tell you, they just look at you like that. I have seen a church Come on, now. had 1,500 members. Come on, now. It went down to about 10 or 15. Yeah. Right. Why? Because First Lady couldn't keep her mouth shut. All right. yeah. Always got to take her 45, 50 minutes before the man of God come out, okay. preach two hours, then turn it over to him. All right. In everybody's business. All right. Now, if something ain't working for you, uh -huh. then you may want to change your strategy. That's right. Amen. You may want to quit. Quit mixing. Thank you, the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Quit mixing in your flesh up yeah. with the spirit and trying to make it work because it don't work. Thank you, Jesus. The oil always going to come up to the top. Yeah, it is. Let me get back. I don't know why I'm saying that. But it's time for the church to set things in order. Yeah. There's an order. Yeah. And I, in my order, I know that I ain't, that I ain't even his neck. All right. You know what? I'm his helpmate. Come on, man. When that man of God got a piece of men, preacher mess, we was on the road for 20 years. All right. The Lord told me, He said, I want you to serve him like you serve those pastors right. that you had to travel all over Germany and all over Korea. Just about every state that I had to go to, I served and didn't complain. Thank you, he said, Then why can't you serve that man, all right. that man of God, like you serve them? And you know what I started doing? Even though before he started ministering, I was served, but I, 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 I really stepped it up a notch. All right, okay. I said, okay, God. Come on. I'm going to serve this man of God. So when he get in that pulpit, all he got to worry about is the word of God. My God. Yes, Lord. So, I, begin, I love it now. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I love laying out his clothes and I sit there and I iron them up. If I got to send him to the cleaners, I make sure that his socks ain't Mitch Mac. Because sometimes Brother Leonard be in service, he have a green sock on and he have a blue sock on. I try to trust him to get his socks. One time we up in Texas, he got, he got to take his shoes off and there was his toe sticking out of his sock. And, you know, and the sisters, there's something about when a husband mess up, they look right at me and say, Sister Little, you see that? I said, that ain't my fault. <laughs> so now when he go, I got to make sure them socks ain't got no holes in them. I thought I could trust him with his socks. But you know what? I kind of honor him. Wait on that man of God. Cause and, you know, and, and, and we got to get out this way. I wish I would. This is a new generation. Get your own stuff together. Now, some men don't like for you to get their stuff. And it's okay. Amen. That's right. It's okay. Amen. But have that understanding. Amen. Amen. Because I'm telling you, many couldn't help aging too much. Come on. Because I have to help her. Hello. Yeah. Hey. 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 Now some women just don't have it. Yeah. <laughs> and I understand that, but when you lazy and you know you can help, uh -huh. oh, yeah. when you know he looking for something, you're like, well, huh. Come on, Jesus. If he want me to find that hat here, yeah. I know exactly what it is. I'm tired. Uh, wait, I don't know why I'm getting, let me get back to the world. Please, you ready or not? Here I come. Let me keep going here. Let me, let, let, what did I, what did I leave off at? Mark, I think Let's go to um, Romans. The 13th chapter. In the 11th verse. You know, I said to myself, I have come too far. Yes. Come too far. Mm -hmm. been, I've been saved ever since I can remember 40 something years. I come too far. Yes. To tell God that. On, for man. God to tell me, I don't know you. That's right. Yes, sir. <laughs> I learned that houses and lands and all this stuff gonna pass away. Yes. Yes. Even the love of your life sometimes, God right. just right. they'll go. They go right. and come. Yeah, that's right. Mm. But God loves never change. Amen. That's right. Amen. And I, I were reading how it's going to be an ever 
the time that we'll be with him is going to be an everlasting love. Yeah. That it ain't going to just, it's, it's going to, I mean, it never ends. It's, it's without, and you ever see the beach and how we went to the beach a couple of weeks ago and how I would begin, I went out on the balcony and I began to look at the ocean as just went as far as my eyes, my eyes can see. Right. What God loves go beyond and beyond and beyond that. Yeah. And one day we're going to be with him forever. Yeah. It's worth, it, it is worth, what you holding on to, uh -huh. worth it. All right. Amen. My God. It ain't worth it. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because the pleasure that we enjoy now is just for a season. Yes. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Love come and go. <laughs> you pull yourself, you you tell God, well, I love you, God, but I love this man better than I love you. All right. So, Father, you know I love you. You know I love you. Jesus, come on now. You know I love you. Yeah. But I'm weak in some areas. Yes, All right. God. Yes, God. Come on now. I'm weak, Father. <laughs> and I got to have him. All right. I got to have him. You made me. He made you. All right. And he know you weak. But they, that's why I said if you get the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. But see, sometimes people don't want to take the time and get the Holy Ghost. Right now. now you're telling me, now you need to hurry up and sit down. I'm looking at this clock. I got to eat at 12 o'clock. Now what you going to do? Right. <laughs> I had a brother. He don't mind me telling him. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't tell you that. I ain't going to say that. But anyway. <laughs> Thank you. He'll tell me he'll, he'll go out to eat at one o'clock. I used to, I was in the church within five years. And he'll be preaching. In the middle of his sermon, the clock was behind him. And the place that he would go eat at closed around two o'clock. And he'll be like, And Jesus is on the main line. You got to tell him what you want. Uh, I say, Jesus is on the main line. You got to tell him what you want. Then he said, It's a quarter It's what the, okay. I got to get out of here because I'm telling you, he's on the main line. <laughs> So if you hanging around, yeah, you taking your time, and you, you, you got people coming up for prayer line, he'll tell you, cut that up, hurry up now. All right. I got to go eat. That's right. All right. Wow. Come on. Mm -hmm. But we got the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Mm. We supposed to have the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. My God. And know that, hey. My God. God's people is more important than your food. Yes, then you get into the restaurant at two yes. o'clock. All right. Hurry up with the prayer. Hurry up with the song service. Mm -hmm. Let's get it done. Yeah. How do we program? How, how do we program the Holy Ghost? Mm -hmm. You know how we do it. You mix it. <laughs> your flesh <laughs> in the Holy Ghost, and it ain't gonna never work. No. Then you wonder why. Come on. People start falling away. You wonder why you, you're sitting up in church and there's no deliverance. Yes. My God, my God. God has to be God yes. in our lives, in our situations. Yes. He's coming back, church. Thank you, Jesus. If you're not ready, uh -huh. I don't care how much you cry. Yes. I don't care how much you try to get it right when God come back and right. you're not ready. Right. Come on, huh? Yeah. Come on. You're going to hell. Let's just be honest about it. Yes, sir. There's a lot of people. Have mercy. I remember a story of a young man. He was 20, 23 years old. And his daddy was a holiness preacher. All right. He was saying, son, God's calling you. Come. Give your life to me. It's time, son. God's just wanting just service after service. Yes, Lord. Five years went on like that. I think at the age, he was at 16 when God started pulling on him. So one particular night, him and five of his friends went to the club. Come on. Coming back from the club, all of them drunk. Yes. 
They hit a tree, every last one of them. Die instantly. The Lord sent one of his servants to hell. All right. And guess what? Mm -hmm. The lady said that I saw this 23-year-old man crying in hell saying, yes. God, please, I'm so sorry for what I've done. Yes. Please let me out of this place. God, if you give me a second chance, yes. I wouldn't do that. And she said, God, she stood by Jesus. She looked at the young, she said, Lord, I feel so sorry for this young man. Come on, man. I told God, can you help him? The Lord said when he was 16 years old. Yes. I came to him many times. Yes. And I pulled on him. Yes. But he wouldn't listen. Right. He said, that's why he ended up in this place now. Right. He said, there's no space for repentance. He said, I pulled and I taught a son. He was called to preach. He was a chosen one. Just like God, he chose the five wives and the five foolish. He chose, they knew who Jesus was. They didn't have, the five foolish didn't have the spirit of God in them. Right. But they knew who he was. Yes. You can come to church all your life. Uh -huh. Be around Christians all your life and never receive Jesus. Right. Come to church because it's your duty to come to church. All right. Because mama made you go. And daddy made you go. Yes. But somewhere, someplace in your life, you got to have an experience with yes. God. And God will pull, he pulled on that young man for five years. Right. Come to me. Come to me. Give your life five, six years begging and pleading. Service after service. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah, he wouldn't take heed. Have mercy. He ended up in hell. Now, the Bible says that he gonna go, he gonna cause he gonna put hell, death, and hell into a lake of fire. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And this story happened many, many, many years ago. All right. About this young man. So you think about now mm -hmm. he's suffering in hell. Mm -hmm. Then God gonna take hell yeah. where he at. All right. And put him into a lake of fire. Forever. Yes. So the torments get worse, sir. All right. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Because you feel like that I got some time. I'm on. I got a lot of more scriptures. But I'm almost done. But you feel like you got some time. Because you're young and you want to experience certain things. And you're old and you feel like that. Hey. But he told me, he said, ready or not, I'm coming back. Yeah. And I'm going to come when they least expect it. Yeah. Look around you, look at the signs of time. Mm -hmm. I know we got to go to do three and a half years of uh, tribulations. Mm -hmm. And we're just about at the door of it. Mm -hmm. But look at the signs of time. Look what's, look what's going on mm -hmm. in America. Yeah. America used to be a blessed nation. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the sins... It's so great. Go with me to, let's, let's look and I find this scripture. I'm almost done. Go with me to Matthew 24 and 36. I'm going to skip over some scriptures. And this is where America is now. Just like in the days of Noah. They were marrying and giving in to marrying. They was drinking. They was doing everything they wanted to do. They were big enough to do. Yeah. And said, Noah, look at that crazy Noah over there. People are not art. We ain't never got a drop of rain. That's right. The whole time I've been. I've been living 120 years and I ain't never seen a drop of rain. And that crazy Noah over there working on that ark Come on. and laughing at him. You know they had to be picking at him. What you need that for? You're not flesh is. Uh -huh. It's uh, like if God tell you to do something, first thing flesh, oh man, there we go. I know some of y'all out there saying, here she go. Well, she said last time that you're cheating on me, and here she go. Have mercy. But y'all you know that God is trying to save some of us. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know, young people and older people, that if you give your life to God right now, it's a lot of in a lot of, of us would have had your opportunity and we did. All right. That where would we where would we be at now in God? Hallelujah. But because some of us gonna have to learn the hard way, like me. But don't be me. Mm -hmm. I learned I had to learn the hard way. Because I just wouldn't listen. I thought my mama didn't understand me. I thought that since I was young, 
that I should be able to show my shape and do what I want to do. All right. I should be able to wear what I want to wear. I have my little mini skirts on with my little cute boots. And I'm like, hey, you old lady. I'm tired of wearing these old dresses all the time. Go to school, change my clothes. I make sure I pack my clothes up. Then one day, mama showed up at the school. All right. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. I had put makeup on my face and I was looking kind of cute. Amen. Back in them days, they didn't believe nothing. Amen. You couldn't do nothing. Amen. And mama showed up at school. Man, I had my white ash, ash, uh, my, uh, what you call it, ash out on my face. I was looking kind of cute. But you know what I love about my mom? She didn't get mad at me. This is what she said to me. She said, baby, if you're big enough to wear it, then you'll be big enough to buy it. All right. And that's how my um, Goodwill store started. <laughs> that's how I started shopping at the Salvation Army and all these other places because. But you know what? But Mama gave me a choice. She said, baby, I'm not going to stop you. Never judge me, never talk about me, or none of that. But she preached holiness. Never compromise with me. Okay. Let me know when I was wrong. Uh -huh. Thank you, Jesus. But she had a wisdom out of this world. Yes, God. God had a hook to me. You know what? That's what's wrong. Oh, folks, we got to get a prayer life. Uh -huh. Don't worry about your children. All right. Man, I was horrible. All right. If they want to wear they let them do it. Let them wear their purple hair. Prove. Purple, I know mine do. Pink streaks and that. that go right. ahead, let them. Come on, man. But you got a hook in them. Yeah. They can't even get away. Right. I'm going to give you a little secret. Right. When mama had that hook in me, I was miserable. Yeah. Uh, the Lord was wearing my honey out. All right. I'm dreaming. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to be judged. I mean, <laughs> judgment was there. Jesus was coming in the clouds of glory. And he's going to judge me. And guess what, guys? I, I was 14, 15 years old. I was going to hell. All right. He had a left side. He had a right side. Yeah. I was over there with the goats. All right. And would wake up in a cold sweat. Come on. Feel like I was falling into a tunnel that I couldn't get out. Yeah. I was going to hell. Come on, man. Why? Because I had a brand mama. Yeah. Go on, do what you want to do, girl. I ain't arguing with you. Come on now. Tell me, girl, don't need that boy alone right now. Here she go again. Here she go again. I can't wait till she go to work. All right. I hope she go to sleep. I'm going to sneak him in the window. This, I was married to him now, y'all. This the man I married. Let her go to sleep. I'm going to sneak him right on in the window. I'm, I'm going to sneak out the baby on the phone. You know, at that time, they, they had them old phone. Mama can pick up and listen to what you got to say. You had to talk in code. They ain't have a cell phone y'all got today. No. No. Babe, I'm going to meet you. Come on, man. Just wait. She go to sleep. She go to sleep. She got to be to work. Yeah. We were so tough. I remember my brothers, they were so horrible. They would wake their mama, go to sleep, take her car, put it in a neutral, roll it down the hill, <laughs> go to the club, be clubbing all night, come back, mama, in the, in the, in the, in the, put her car right back in the driveway. She never knew it. All right. We were horrible. And I'm wondering why I had to read some stuff that I yeah. so I had to read some stuff. Cause why? My, my kids can never be bad. Come on. I knew what my brothers was doing. I'm like, now let me tell you something. I, I'm, a, I, I'm watching out for you. Now you know you better be back at a certain time. You better bring me some food home. I'll be up three in the morning for, waiting for them. They bring my plate right on in. They know I was sneaking out the window. They didn't tell mama nothing. All right. Come on, man. But I had to read some stuff. My Tyrone God. can help but to be bad. My God. Straight bad. <laughs> 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 they couldn't have it. Straight bad. Got caught one night. Mama said, uh, where you been on that? Oh, mama, I'm telling y'all, I'm telling you, 
When you get your back up against the wall and you a sinner, you ain't got the Holy Ghost, boy, you can come up with some lies. All right. I told mama, mama, what it was, I had a bad dream. <laughs> and I went down to the church house. And I stayed in the parking lot all night long praying, trying to ask God to forgive me. <laughs> I had to make that thing right. Before my mama, I was lying back then. Come on now. I mean, I had to make that thing right. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, young people, the things you doing, we already know. Yeah. We done did it. We've been there done it. Don't even, do you know what best thing to do is give your life to God right now and just let it go. Right. You can't hide from us. Because we don't say that don't mean we don't know. Right. We, we, I mean, you got some of the best of the best can tell you some things to help you out. That's right. Don't do it. Get you, give your life to God right now because ain't no new thing in the book. The, tell, the devil tell you there's some new things. So try it. Ain't no new thing under the sun that we ain't tried. Come on, for real. And I want to let you know, so. me sneaking out them wonders Come on, man. caused me to get married at a young age that I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have got married. Come on, Why? First time sneaking out, first time I got pregnant. Come on, man. Yeah. One time. It don't take but one time for the devil to set you up. He set me right up. Didn't have to leave home. I had a good mama. A praying mama. A mama that worked and got things that I needed. Why? I thought I was grown. You know, I got 14 years, 15. I, I'm grown now. And don't know nothing. He 15 and I'm 17. Thought I was grown. And was just a baby. Heard the preacher, preacher in the pulpit. I'm almost done. I'm having somebody. Heard the preacher in the pulpit says, kids, stay home and live off your mama. Mm -hmm. Right now, you're 15, 16, go to college. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Don't you don't have to worry about a light bill. Because you it's, it's when you get 20, 21, you're gonna you have to pay that light bill in that water bill. He said, live now and enjoy your family. Enjoy your life. Be young. Yeah. But no. I thought I was smarter than the preacher. Yeah. Till I got on my own and had to leave home. When that same guy I snuck out the one with, mm -hmm. got me in the Texas, he joined the military. Yeah. And I thought I, I knew him and I thought he knew me. Right. Come to find out that he, he was doing all kind of stuff. Come on, man. Thank you, Jesus. We pay the bill, guess what I had to do? We pay the water bill, I had to go to the laundromat. Come on. Get a big brown paper bag and put a jug inside of it. Yeah. Bring it back to the house so I can walk my kids down and myself down. Yeah. Why? I could have been at home living a good life with my mama. Come on. But why? Because I thought I knew more than my mama. Yeah. I thought I, you can't tell me nothing. Mm -hmm. But let me shut my mouth. I know I'm going to. So. Matthew 24 and 36. I'm going to close after this. But of that day and hour, north no man, no not the angels of heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah, they were so, as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage. Until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, and one shall be taken, and the other left. I might won't go no further, but anyway, he's coming back for a church without spot of lineage. And we never know when it's going to be our time. No. But get ready. Yes. Be ready at all times. You say, Sister Lynn, how do I get ready? Seek his face. Yes. Ask him to fill you with his spirit. Some people like to say Holy Spirit. Some people like to say the Holy Ghost. All right. I was raised up on the Holy Ghost, but ain't nothing wrong with the Holy Spirit. Get all that you can get. And if you go in a situation where you just can't seem to help yourself, I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost can take care of that too. You get to a place where you can't pray for yourself. There's elders in here that can help you pray yourself through. Yes. You're not alone, but somewhere or another, you have got to get Ready. My God, my God. Yes, well, you said, well, 
being ready. You can walk out this church now All right. and drop dead. That's right. Amen. That's right. You, are, you, you know what? I always tell myself, and I'm always constantly asking God to help me. I'm constant, Lord, if I did anything that's not like you forgive me. I try to not to whisper, say, I'm conscious now about, it. I don't even, I told God, and I know I'm going to get out of the way. I don't even want to stand in my mind. All right. I don't want to stand in my thoughts. I don't want to stand in my life yes. because I want to be ready when he comes. Thank you, Jesus. Because he's coming. Yes. Don't put off the day for tomorrow. That's right. And say to yourself, I'm not going to be a hypocrite. That is the poorest excuse that we come up with. All right. I'm not going to be fake, and I'm not going to be a hypocrite, and I know I'm not going to do right. Hmm. What happened? If you say that, he come get you tomorrow. All right. Or he come get you too. You don't know what your life going to be like next week. Amen. Don't take no chances. No. Don't take chances with your life. Okay, we're going to close out. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for thank your you. word today, Father. It may not make sense to some, but it did make sense to others. I know it did, Father. And Father, help us to be ready, God. You're coming back, Father. Yes. And we ain't got long, Father. We don't know the day nor the hour, God. When man always trying to figure out your time, we can't figure out your time. Yes. But you gave us signs and warnings of your coming, Father. Yes. Even in Matthew 24, you told us what to live wars and rumors of wars, God. And we're there, God. You talk about famine, God. We at the door of famine. Even in America, God, there's a famine in the word of God. And also there's a famine in food, Father. Yes. Sometimes we don't look at the news. We don't look at things and search things out. But we are in trouble. America is in trouble, right. God. And I know you told me that you're going to bring America to their knees, God. We don't know what it looked like for war to be on our soil. But it's coming, Father. Yes, Father. God, it's coming, God. You show me the explosion that's going to happen in America. One after the other, God. That's trouble coming, Father. Yes. God, we don't have time. This pleasure that's in America is almost over. Why? Because we won't submit to you, Father. But God, you said in the midst of trouble, you would keep the righteous. Yes, God, keep the righteous, Father. Yes, Lord. But God, you told me even, Lord, that you're going to start giving the righteous dreams and visions of the end times, Father. Uh, to shake them up, Father. God, you coming, Father. Yes, Lord. And God, we ain't ready, Father. But God, help us to get ready, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your name we pray, Father. And I just want to encourage some of you. To get your little extra stuff in the house. Lord spoke to me and said that there's some trouble coming. Yes, and we, won't be, we ain't going to be able to dot our food, our, our feet out the door. Jeez. And that you better get a little something in the house. Because what you got in the house is what you're going to have to eat on for a little bit. That's right. God told me they're going to shut this country down for a while. My God, my God. And what, the shutdown that we had before is going to be worse than, than um, what we're going to have to go through. Let me know there's a disease coming that's going to eat some of us inside from the inside out. And we ain't ready. Our, our minds ain't ready for what we about to go through. But we can't turn our mind out. Uh, this country just act like they don't need you. can't even mention the name of Jesus no more. That's right. It's all right to say God this and God that. No, there's power in the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. And because America has rejected him, right. then he's going to reject America. When Israel turned it back on God, that's right. God turned his back on them. Yeah. And that's where we at now. America think they can do whatever they want to do, say what they want to say. They're, they're just, just killing babies and just, just, just all this sex trafficking all right. going on. Have mercy. God is going to judge us. If God don't judge us, he need to apologize to Solomon Gomorrah. Right. He need to raise Solomon and Gomorrah up again and say, Solomon and Gomorrah, I'm sorry for sending brimstone and fire and, 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 and destroying you. Because yeah. America is worse than Solomon and Gomorrah. Have mercy. Have but there's a wisdom that God gave Joseph mm -hmm. in the time of famine. Yeah. Get you something now. Hallelujah. Prepare now. God spoke to me last night. He said, tell the people to prepare. Yeah. Get you a little extra. Because it's coming. When your baby look up at you. All right. And say, Mom, I'm hungry. What you going to do? All right. Get an extra can of soup and rice and beans. So you, if you got to shut down in there for a month because you can't go outside. Mm 
having a little beans and rice in that house to feed that baby. So you ain't got to go out there and steal and rob and because your child hungry. We don't know what it's like to be hungry in America. There's millions of people right now in America that's hungry. You had a good Christmas dinner. I'm gonna get on not the way, but I'm gonna say this. You had a good Christmas dinner. There's some people that didn't have a Christmas dinner. There's some kids that get toys right in America. Because of sin. And God is gonna whoop America and bring America to his knees. And as Christians, God is telling us and wanting us get ready. We ain't seen death like we got. We ain't never experienced death. When 9-11 happened, we thought they was the end of the world. Yeah. But something worse than 9-11 is coming. Yeah. And the Christians are asleep. Amen. But God told me that he's going to give you dreams in here All right. to wake you up. To let you know there's some trouble coming. Trouble is at the door. Yes. I feel like when we go into 2021, mm. it's going to be a domino effect. Mm. Why would God punish these other countries? Mm -hmm. These pagan countries. Yeah. And we have become a pagan country. Yeah. And he going to let us go. No. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That we can sit it. Hallelujah. We can stand in this pulpit. Sin. Just talked to a lady the other day. She's in one of her sister laws. Was accusing her brother for five years of sleeping around. All right. In the whole five years she was going with a preacher. That's right. He preaching in the pulpit every Sunday. Got a wife and a family over there. She Going with him for five years, That's right. sleeping in God, having a fair in God's house. That's right. In the in God's house, yeah. who does that? And God ain't gonna destroy America. No. You that hot and lustful that you are sleeping. You don't get a hotel room, but you are asleep in the house of God. God. You can stand up in the pulpit, knowing your wife is over here, your love over there. My God. God ain't pleased with America. God's going to destroy America. Then we want to sugarcoat everything. Yeah, I was born like You wasn't born like that. God ain't going to let you be with a man. And you a man, a woman, you a woman. And get expect for God to smile upon you. He ain't going to smile upon you. God is going to destroy sin. The sins of America has come up before him. Thank you, Lord. Anything, though, I'm going to sit down and shut up. I know it's getting late. Somewhere now, we got to get back to fear of God. And if God got to whoop and take away our pleasure things for us to bend our knees and get back to where we need to be, God's going to do it. How can a man of God get in the pulpit? Yes, Lord. Have a relationship with a woman for five years. And wonder why the brothers in church can't stay faithful. That spirit he got is just going out into the audience. And you wonder why your marriage is all messed up and he and another man can't keep their eyes to this. Why the spirit of love, it'll take over the whole congregation. When one mess up, it'll take over the whole congregation. And you got a church, church full of adultery. And it's that's right. And it's time out. Amen. It's time out. Yes, but we want to shout over, over all this stuff. Yes. No fear of God. Yes. And laying your hand. And I ain't talking about a Baptist. I'm talking about a Pentecostal church. Right. I ain't talking about the Baptist. I expect the Baptist to act like the Baptist. But I'm talking about a person that said they got the Holy Ghost. Right. Amen. My God. My Let me hush. Whether or not he's coming. Yeah, yeah. Yes, God. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. He's coming. Yes. We got to get ready. Yes, Lord. But I'm telling you today, God's going to judge us. Yes, yes. Some of us are going to be hungry. All right. And you're going to look back on this day. Right. And you're going to remember these words. Right. When your baby look up at you and say, Mama, what we going to eat? When God is telling you, do something now. 
Get you a little extra something. Because you may have to help your neighbor. All right. Because it's coming. Come on, Brother Lynn. Do anybody need prayer this morning? Anybody need prayer? We'll pray for you. Sorry, guys, if I... But you know, we got to start living right. We got to start doing right. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord told me that you need to type you straight forward. Straight forward, God's going to use you in a mighty way. I see what God is going to send you out to places and you have to set your face like a flint and preach the word. You know, sometimes you feel like that if you can't be two hours in a place and quiet that you ain't reaching out. But God said he see you when you're rocking that baby. He see you when you're cooking in the kitchen. He see you when you're driving up and down the highways that you're reaching out. He said, the Lord said, your, your life is a constant. It's in constantly in prayer. And sometimes you beat yourself up because you can't sit there for two hours. But he, I heard the Lord say there, a six hour period, you would just reach out and pray to me. He said, I'm writing it down. The Lord said, don't beat yourself up because prayer is in you. Father. And for so long that we think that you, you had to be a certain way, you had to kneel and you had to do this. He said, but you'd be surprised how your prayers have held by things, even upon the husband. When the devil wanted to come in like a flood, but he couldn't touch him. And because of your prayers and because of your dedication, said God, there's a hedge built around even your husband, even your daughter, said God. She is called to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Just like you, said God. And you do great things for me. Sometimes people misjudge you because of a lot of times you don't smile. You just, what you see is what you get. But there's a love, a godly kind of love in you. To where it is, you give everything you got to, to people. But God said he had to put you aside and take you from where you were at. Because he's going to bless you. He lost you got to know when to give and when not to give. When to sacrifice and when not to sacrifice. Oh, I, have a I heard the Lord say, I called you blessed, said God. I called you blessed, my little one. Thank you. Hey, Lord, is he going to come to you in a night vision? In the vision that he's going to show you, you're going to feel like it's happening to you right then. But he got to show you some things that's coming that you might warn your people, not only your people, but this church. There's some trouble coming. And he's going to take you off into it. You're going to be able to testify. And some things that he showed you, he said, don't say it on camera, said God. And some things that he's going to show you is going to be unreal. And I heard the Lord say, he strengthened your body. He strengthened you. Oh, he said, don't even worry about you. Uncle and your aunt, they're already in heaven, walking in heavenly places with me, said God. Thank you. But I heard the Lord says, time. He's going to save your oldest daughter. He's going to fill her with the Holy Ghost. I see, I see a commotion happening in a room. You've been praying. 
there's a commotion going to happen in the room that the Holy Ghost is going to come in. And it's going to overtake her, said God. Ooh, hey, shut up. Sometimes I see where she just snaps at you sometimes and get a little attitude when you try to warn her and tell her things. But God said, don't let up. Don't let up, said God. Don't let her do what she want to do and go where she want to go, said God. Hasha. Because if you can see her life three years from now and the things that I got in store for her, said God, then I'm going to bless her. I'm going to raise her up to be a minister's wife. Don't let up, said God. Don't let her get her the freedom that she want and what she want. And I said, you're watchman, even over that baby. You wonder why you carry that child. It's because it came from me, said God. And it's going to do work for me. Who shall I be And the Lord said, don't even worry about some finances. He said, it'll be up to you whether you want to take a job or not. But I want to bless you. But you don't, well, you don't have to worry, ever worry about finances, said God. He said, you said, God, I, it's a certain thing I want to buy. And that's why, God, why do you take my job from me? Because I had it in my heart to buy a certain thing. But God said, that's already worked out. He shouldn't be here. He said, you stay faithful to me, said God. And the Lord said, you're used to a certain lifestyle. And now you're having to depend upon me. He says, all me. It's all me, said God. I'm teaching you to depend upon me. He said, speak it to an existence. He said, I gave you a wisdom and a talent and a go-getter to go after. What a person pay, I pay 200000 for, you'll pay 100000 You'll pay 75000 I gave you a gift to see it. Oh, shut up. Who shut up? A gift that's in you. A gift of numbers and divisions and uh, algebra. Just things that you could just sit in a building and just know. A gift from me, said God. If you take care of mine and I'm going to take care of yours. Said God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Oh, should I? Oh, should I? Ooh, la baha. Woman of God. For thou have sought me in secret, said God. Even seven nights ago, thou have asked me of a thing. And I, God, would say, even unto thee, not one should be lost. Who shall I have? I heard the Lord say, You are a romantic type of person that. You give a lot of love, and there's certain things that you want back, said God. God. You have asked me, God. God, I want to feel a certain way. God, I need a certain thing. You have asked me in secret. But the Lord, you had fussed about it. You didn't mention it. He said, he God said, he said, he answer. Every prayer, even down to the small things. Hey, Lord, that's a certain thing that a woman need. And God's going to work it out, said God. Who should I have? I see you work so hard when it comes to love. You work so hard, said God, and you give. And because it's the way that person was raised, it's so hard at times. But I heard the Lord said, because of your prayers and because you have held your peace, you said, God, I have talked about this for years. I'm not going to talk about it no more. And God said, he's going to come in. He's going to stand up for you, said God. Oh, said it. He, I heard the Lord say, I have heard you, my little one. For I'm yours and you're mine, and I see the heart. And I see what's in you, said God, and I'm going to take it, and I'm going to work it out. 
even some finances, some things that's due to you, that's been held back. Shit. I'm going to make them release it. I'm going to make them do what they want to do. But I got to put them flat on their back, said God. I'm going to make them for 20 years you have suffered. And the Lord said, after this day, no more, said God. No more, said God. Who should not my high? For you said, God, if you hear me, I need you to do this, Father. I heard the Lord say, so. And I heard the Lord say, I'm going to open up door after door. Preach a woman. I heard the Lord say, you're a woman after my own heart. Hard, I'm a whole shot. You Oh, my heart. Hear the Lord say, when I told, when the devil came up to me and said, and he wanted to tempt Job. And I said, he's an upright man. And I heard the Lord say, you're an upright woman. Faithful all these years. Faithful. And I'm going to bless you now, said God. You never doubted me. And you never charged me foolishly. You sit. You, you stood and you took and you suffer humility in secret and God said he's going to reward you open and it's condition that bothers you God's going to fix it it's fixed says God oh little one if you can see the bush in the eye even your kids are cedars one got a great talent. Great talents. Even two, said God. And I'm going to use them in a mighty way, said God. Even in this place. And the Lord said, don't force them. Don't worry. Don't worry about the car. I'm going to do it. He said, sometimes there's a struggle. But I'm finna stir up their sleep. When they come to you and say, God. Mama, something just came in my room. He says, me, said God. Just let, let them go. I'm going to take away their peace, said God. Oh, they're going to run to you and say, good mama, I'm, I'm scared. I said, it's all right. Just let them talk. But I'm going to stir up their nest. I'm going to shake them over hell every last one of them, said God, because I promise you, and I want to go to hell, said God. They'll call the son called the preacher's gospel of the kingdom. God said, don't worry, not one of your prayers has been in vain. And he said, Lord, am I going to live? He said, Lord, said, you're going to be here a long time. You'll live to see them preach the gospel. Ain't nobody going to take your place. The devil is alive. There's nobody going to take your place. And hold on, my body. Oh, shut up. Preach my gospel. Amen. Hold not back. Set your face like a flint. And stand up for the truth, said God. I've called you from your mother's room. Even at 15, 16, you had experience of me and visions of me, said God. About da, 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 da. Preach. Preach. Dear God, behold your peace in your household. I'm going to save every last one. And when you go back, even though there's angels in your house, that a certain angel going to follow you back home. And I'm going to stir up the nest. Save God. Because of you. Never failed me. Never looked back. All your life. You never wanted the world. And you never, even when you was tempted. When, even when you was going through the, the, the trial of your life. You said, God, I will, I will not bow. And you never bow. Save God. God and I'm pleased. <laughs> now the blessings of the Lord shall overtake you. I shall open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. And it shall overtake. To you too are a giver. And God's gonna bless you to give. You're gonna give. You got you got a spirit of giving. But in the time past, you've been used and abused by people. But God said, You're gonna know now. What who to give to who not. Thought one person was your friend, but they never was, said God. Wanted to be you. Wanted your life, said God. 
And I had to show you that. But now when you give, you know who to give. Who to cut off and who to bless, said God. But I, the Lord, has spoken. Thank you. Come on, give a praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's give a praise. God, we sing your word to Brother Trey this morning, Father. We miss him this morning, Father. God, even the song service ain't even the same without him, God. He's just a part of us now, God. We send your word, God, that you would fix whatever need to be fixed, God. The things that he's going and in, in, doing his body, Father. God, you fix it. God, in your name, God. Lord, when she get home, let everything be okay, Father. You know, I heard the Lord say he's going to open up your wounds. Hallelujah. Hey, the Lord said he's going to open up your womb. There's one thing your husband won't. It's a baby. And God's going to do it. Ah, shut up. Hallelujah. God and mercy, Jesus. God in your name, Father. God, you bless her, God. I see it, Father. God, you open it up, God, in your timing, Father. But he's going to give you a baby. Huh. Mm. My God, I see it too. He's going to give it to you. But I'm praying for your patience. God going to give you the patience that you need to go through this. He's going to give you the wisdom that you need to go through this. But here the Lord said that in secret, your husband been praying and asking. And we'll let you know he's going to be okay too. Jesus. He's going to be okay, but just get ready. Set up. Mm. And at the right place, the right time, and the right season, it'll come to pass. Said God. You know, when I, you, God's gonna bless you. You've been so faithful. Even with the talents you got. God said you got many talents. But He's gonna add three more because of your faithfulness, said God. Ah, oh, shit, I don't. I see a spirit of a prayer life and it's overtake you. The things that you long to do, certain movies, you just ain't gonna have an appetite for. Them. You're gonna get bored with God gonna give you, make a prayer word out of you. You're gonna pray and, and you're gonna lose track of time in your prayer life. Yes. And I see that also the Lord is raising you up to preach this gospel of the kingdom. And I heard the Lord say, a spirit of prophecy, of talent, of prophecy is gonna overtake you. And you're gonna tell things that 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 that's foreseen and, and things to come because of you have used and you've been faithful over a little. He's gonna bless you more. He's gonna increase you. And I hear the Lord, so you have even grown spiritually in me, said God. And I hear there's things that used to bother you ain't gonna bother you no more. And that temple, sometimes you get mad and you just get these things and you just want to throw something and you just want to stomp and, and pout. But God said that leaves. He said one day you're going to wake up and it's going to be gone. And then even going to dawn on you going to be saying, man, that don't even bother me no more. Who shut up. Because of your faithfulness, God is going to bless don't worry about what your life going to look like six months ago. It's already, I got it already mapped out. Said God, just live for me. Preach my gospel. Sing my songs of Zion, said God. Prophesy. And see when I increase and give you more talents. And when you get before the throne of grace, I will say, well done, my faithful servant. Well done. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When you that spirit of prophecy come over you, don't be scared. Just let it go. Sometimes we feel like that we out of order. We just feel like, God, I can't do that. God, I, I just don't want to. But you yield to that spirit. When that spirit come on you, just let it go. Because you don't know what person that you saving, what God, what, what you're heading off. He's just like a watchman. You can say, Lord, I'm, I'm young, but you're just like a watchman. And God say, 
yield to it. Don't worry about being out of order, but yield. And then when you yield that, you feel that freedom, that burden that lifts off of you. Because sometimes you sit in service, you can see things, and you say, God, I don't want to be out of order, but yield to it, says God. Thank you, Jesus. Give the Lord a praise. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we ask you right now, Father, that you strengthen Brother Ernest, strengthen Brother Ernest right now, Father. God, he wants to be obedient in your sight. But you know what, Brother Aaron, what I see is once you surrender to God all the way, you can't hold nothing back. What's holding you up is God going to give you a wife and going to give you what you need, but you got to give God what he needs. If you take a holy vessel and give it to you, and you ain't in the place that you need to be, it never works at God. As long as he's waiting on you, he's going to send somebody in this church. That's for you, and you'll be for them, and they'll love you like you are. Oh, but God said he ain't going to do it to you. Surrender all. Not part. He said he got to have all of you. He said do it now. There's some trouble trying to come, and I see the devil trying to set up a trap for you. Even on your motorcycle. I see you getting angry, and you're hitting a brick wall, and you're not making it because of anger. Somebody made you mad, and you just got mad, and you just, I see you just driving, and you hit a brick wall, and you didn't make it. And God said, if you would just give me your life this day, this day, said God, not tomorrow, but surrender all to me this day. And I, I give you, and I, I know what you need. I know what you ask me for in secret. I know your heart said God. But God said he just want you. You this day. And when you do that, God said he's going to raise up a handmaid just for you. And you'll preach this gospel of the kingdom. You'll be more happy than you've ever been before. I heard the Lord say, you be faithful to me, and I'll be faithful to you. And you'll be around a long time. Sometimes you worry about there's a condition in your body. You said, God, I got this condition. But God say, she'll love you for what you are, said God. She'll help you through your sickness. And in health, rich, or poor, said God. She'll love you for you. And it won't matter. But all I'm asking you is, and sometimes because of the things that you go through your body, it causes you to draw, draw back and you get angry. You get angry with God because of it. But it's not God's fault. It's not his fault, said God. But I'm able to heal you and set you free and make you happy. And I see you walking in a, not this building, but we're in another building. I see you, you and your bride walking up, walking. And I see you standing before Brother Leonard. He's marrying you, said God. And you're as happy as you ever been. But God said, it'll come to pass if you would just give me you. This day, said God. He lost, you got a lot of love to give. But it ain't enough for me, said God. Love me with all your heart, soul, mind, and your strength. And I add on to you, and you'll be happy as you ever been. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, live your Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we ask you right now, Father, to touch. She's just like a daughter to me. God, I love her so much, Father. And what I love about her, Father, she ain't a hypocrite. What you see is what you get, Father. But I many times she'll even fight for me. And I have to tell her, mm -mm, mm -mm, that ain't what God wants. But that's the type of person she is, Father. And God, I ask you, Father, to give her heart's desire too, Father. God, you see it and she loves you, Father. God, go in this heart right now and give her heart's desire, Father. God, I don't know the heart like you to do, Father. But God, let her surrender all to you to this day, Father. 
and the thing that she's been asking for in secret will fall in place. I promise you, even years ago, that I would keep what's yours, said God. Even your sons, even your daughter, that harm wouldn't come. But I will ask you this day, my daughter, that you two got talents to sing and to testify of me. I hold you accountable this day for your talents. Even in the services, says God. Sing to me. Sing the songs of Zion. Even when you land up on your bed, there are songs that would come to your heart and in your spirit. Even when you're driving down the road, I'm going to give you opportunities to sing and to praise me, said God. Um, and even in your singing, that I will break yokes and bondages and the things that you bound, Mama, hide to me. Even that temple, said God. Sing and all that things that bothers you won't bother you no more, said God. The things that you're weak in, I should make you strong, Mama. He should and he should and he is so the bohusha. Ooh, Mama, ha, Mama, ha, he is And I should take you out in the spirit, and I should fill you with my Holy Ghost. For I would desire to fill you. For the devil desire to sip you as wheat, said God. But I desire to come in and fill you with the Holy Ghost. For you to have eyes to hear a gift to see and just know the nature of a person. Oh, even on your job, you say, I don't trust that man right there. There's something about that man ain't right. I don't trust him. Because I've given you that talent from a child, said God. And some things that you suffer from a child. It shouldn't have been, said God. And he said, God, if I ever get kids, then I'm going to do things different. But I heard the Lord say he wants to bless you. But he got to have all of you. He want all of you, said God. And the Lord said, you know what to do, too. Just take it one day at a time. Said God, I give you all. When you wake up in the morning, said God. This is your day, Father. And, I, and, and just say, God, I give you my life. And you will see there's a change that going to overtake you. And I see you with a microphone walking up and down this aisle, just singing the praises of God where you can't even contain yourself. And I heard the Lord say, let it go. 2021 is going to be a troubling year, but it's going to be a good year for you spiritually, said God. God's going to use you. I see the Holy Ghost of my now. You say, God, if it's real, I want to feel it. Oh, my. Mm. Mm. You say, God, I'm tired of these hypocrites. <sighs> mm. God said, mm. He's going to make himself real to you. Huh. He's going to make himself real to you. Mm, he said, don't worry about two. You've been worried about two. He's going to be okay. He's going to grow up to be a nice young man. Amen. Said God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The Lord says, mm, if you can see your life nine months from now, God said he's going to bless you. Mm, hallelujah. And there's some things that you struggle with. God said he's going to help you with that. Hallelujah. I'll see you nine months from now, happy as you've ever been before. He said to make you happy. Ooh, he said, don't worry about, worry about the, your circumstances right now. But if you can see what I see. Mm. Ooh, my. And the Lord said, stay in this house as much as you can. Um, He's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. You told God, God, I want to know what that Holy Ghost feel like. I want to know what it's like to have the fullness of your Holy Spirit in me. And God said, he's going to give it to you. 
He's going to fill you with the high. I feel something going in right now in the pits of your stomach. Let me see. Da -da -da she did it eat that out of heart of a whole shot. Who shut up? Mm. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Mm. And God said, He's going to fix what's broken. He's going to fix what's broken, said God. I see Him raising up a handmaid for you. She did it eat. Salabaha, raising up a handmaiden for you, said God. You long for a handmaid, and God's going to raise up just for you. And you'll see it come to pass. Nine months won't pass, and you'll know that the word of the Lord has spoken. Stay faithful unto me, and I'll be faithful unto you. It took everything in you. Even to get into this, back into this house. But God said, you're in my will. What you need is going to come from this house right here, said God. He said, just get in the place that you need to be spiritually. And watch it come to pass. He said, you ain't going to have to look for it. It's going to look for you, said God. Man, man, And I call you blessed. Give unto me, said God. Give what's due unto me, said God. Hold not even your finances back, but give what's due unto me. And watch the windows of heaven hold, open up to you. For I set you up, and I bless you with the desires of your heart, said God. But only trust me. Don't worry about the past. Don't worry about what's in front of you and what's behind you. But put your eyes upon me, the hills where your help coming from. And see them. I work out your whole life, said God. I work. I got your whole life mapped out, said God. And it won't be no regrets, said God. I ask you to strengthen them, God. Strengthen them where he's weak, Father. Um, God, you know what he needs, God. You told that you're going to do it for him. You're going to do You know what he longed for. You're going to do that too, Father. And God bless him his, on that job, God. Keep him, God. Keep him from all harm or danger, all diseases and things that's out there on that job, God. And God, I know he gets off work early Sunday morning. He comes straight into your house, God. Remember that, God. Remember his faithfulness. And in, in, in your name we pray, God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Heavenly Father. God, I should have blessed him, Father. God, he's got such a good heart, Father. And one thing he vowed that he'll never be a hypocrite, God. And he's real, Father. And God, he got so many talents in him, Father. A worshiper, Father. He is a well, not only a man of God that we're going to preach this gospel of the kingdom, but he was born to worship. To lead your pe people into a praise, God. It's in him, God. He can't help. When he take the microphone, God, that he will cause a people to worship and to praise him. It's been in his bones ever since he was six years old, Father. But God, I ask you to strengthen him. God, there's some things that he needs financially, Father. God, I ask you to work his finances out, Father. God, there's some things that he's been asking in secret, God. Father. Things that he missed out on life, God, that I just, I know that you're going to make up for, God. God, give him a a, a, a good job making $20 an hour, God. Lord, let him start out with 18 and 19 and $20 an hour, Father. God, he won't hold back from you. He's a giver too, Father. And God, he got such a love and compassion, God, where he can teach these young men in here and, and prevent them to go down the same road. He had to go through, Father. But it was all a test, Father. It's all the things that he's been through in life is to teach and to show other young men what and what not to do, Father. God, he had to suffer that they may not have to suffer, God. And God, I ask you, God, even in the young men meetings, God, God, use them to tell his testimony. Oh, shalada. Because he has suffered great things, things that he don't even want to talk about, Father. Things that he don't even want to mention, Father. But Father, I ask you, God, 
to give him the wisdom and the knowledge and when he tell his story that they may take heed father and god bless his coming and his going father god bless his wife and his kids god God, bring a healing to his baby father. Some things that he worry about, God, there's nothing too hard for you, Father. And God, all the things that the canker worm and the caterpillar have taken from him, God, give it back a hundred fourth. And the Lord said, he's going to bless you, too. There's some things that you want for that woman back there. Things that you ask God. Even this Christmas, the things that you want to do for her. And if she can see your heart. But you love her. The things that you want to do, and you feel like your hands was tied. And the things that you used to do, he said, God, I'm not going to resort to them things the more to get for them, God. You're going to have to do this. And God, because of your faithfulness, God, honor it. Because you're not looking back, God's going to honor it. And God's going to give you everything that you need to be the man that you want to be. You know who? So many nights you laid up on your bunk and you just would cry to God, God, I got to have a change. But all that you went through is going to have so many young men, not only men, but women, said God. All the suffering that you had to go through and all the humility that you had to go through, said God. And when you preach this gospel of the kingdom, God said you got something to preach about now. When you tell them what's right and what's wrong and there's a, a, a devil waiting for you, you know what it is. And God said he's going to fill this house with men just like you. And when they come in, you know what? Oh, the bullshit is going to come in with tattoos and earrings. And you're going to take them, you're going to embrace them, you're going to love them for what they are. When they come in as drug dealers and murderers, say, God, you'll be able to embrace them. You understand them. Oh, she won't judge them. Say, God, God's going to use you because they come in new to see that. I see they coming in in fives. I see whole gangs coming in them. Oh, CDD. And God's going to use you. He's going to use you in a mighty way. And teach even others to love. Don't judge another man. Don't judge. Don't judge that man because he got tattoos all over his face. Don't judge that man. That man love God. He gonna use you in a mighty way, says God. Because they coming in. They coming in just the way they are. With their pants hanging down. But God said, it's time. They coming in. Get ready, people. God's gonna fill this church up with young men. Look hard on the outside, but they're broken on the inside. Cry out for help, mother. Don't judge me. How they can't go to certain churches because they're the judge and women to put up their purses and hide in their money. You judge them, but don't judge that God. They're pure in heart. I'm calling them out of the streets and the edges and the highways. I'm calling them out, said God. Do not judge what's mine, said God. Don't call what's unclean. Unclean, said God. But I'm going to use this young man. I'm going to use him in a mighty way. Think not it's strange that I sent you in this place, said God. If you take care of my house, I'm going to take care of yours, said God. I'm going to take care of you. Jesus, name we pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give the Lord praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Put a, a wall and a hedge around about this baby, God. I know she's called and chosen of you, Father. And God, I thank you for the bond that you put in her and her grandma. God, even before she was born, she, grandma got a word and said, God will put a bond between the both of them, God. And God, I thank you for the bond. I ask you to strengthen her grandmama, God. Give her the strength, God, 
to be and to take care of this baby. She loved her so much, Father. God, go inside this body. And strengthen, Father. God, you strengthen her coming and her goings, Father. God, oh, shout out my heart. I heard, you know, I keep saying the word cancer, but the devil, the Lord said, you don't have cancer. I heard the devil is trying to put that upon you, but God said, no way. He said, you don't have it. Don't claim it. Don't accept it. Don't accept that spirit, that spirit of torment that try to come to your mind and tell you because you feel this weakness in your body. It's just a time of testing, said God. And I'm going to lead you into a, a time of fasting and prayer, said God, with the things that's coming. I put the burden of some of the people upon your shoulders because there's trouble coming. And I've led you into a place of quietness and a time of prayer. In a time of praying and for protection for the people. They're not as strange for the things that you feel like your strength has been there because of the prayer and the burden that I've put in the dreams and the vision that I've showed you. A time of trouble is coming. And I heard the Lord say, you're going to get through the time of tribulation. And you're going to help many and encourage many in this time, said God, I'm a shot of my mama. And I strengthen my mama. I make your feet like hind feet, said God. To stand up to the enemy in the atmosphere. In the, in, in the, I see there's an atmosphere of the enemy in the principalities in the the, the the time of war is in the atmosphere set up a war I? and you see it and you experience it and it calls you to pray and to stay before the Lord constantly because of the things that you see says God and it calls you to get weak in your body because of lack of sleep because of prayer but but God said, just keep standing in the gap. Um, keep praying that I may awaken my people for the trouble that's coming. For I'm well pleased, said God. And I should keep thee in what's yours, said God. I should keep thee, keep that coming and that going. Even the prayer that you prayed over your loved one. For, but right before your eyes, their great deliverance. And they won't go back because of your prayer, said God. And there's so many things that you want to do financially. And God's going to work it out that you're made to do it. He says, time. He's going to open up the windows of heaven. It's time, said God. Here the Lord said, just make a righteous judgment when you give. Give, said God. It should be given back to you. Press down. Oh, shall I? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord said He wants all of you. Not part of you. He lost you came a long way. But he got to have all of you. He said right now you should be preaching the gospel of the truth. And telling of his goodness. But God sit the devil sit traps for you. And it caused you to have a setback. And cause spirits that have gone to come back. I said God. But God said this day. He promised you. Even last year, that he's going to bless you. Even with a, a spouse. But he said he got to have all of you. Well, hold back your blessing is, you hold back from him. Anything that you ask me, I have given. And I have not held back. But here the Lord said he wants you to give all. All of you. And he'll give you your heart's desire. You long too to have somebody to love and to be in your life. But God said, let me be that now. Love me.
with all your heart of Asha, soul of Asha, mind of Mahusha, nene nene Asha, of Mahusha, of my strength. And the things that are, that bothers you won't bother you no more. For I've called you from your mother's womb to preach this gospel of the kingdom. Not only sing the the, the songs of Zion, for you to have a gift to sing, but you hold back. Sing, said God. Sing my songs of Zion. Yield yourself unto me, said God. Hold not back, and you'll see everything that are, that's going to fall in place. And recently you went through a hurt. But God said he'll mend that today. He said he got to have all of you. Your mind says God and I'm yours. And the things that you go through and when you get upset you'll see they won't bother you no more. But I got to have all of you this day. And this day I don't remember your sins anymore said God. I don't remember what happened yesterday. I don't remember what happened last week, said God. I'm a whole shot of my mama. I need it. 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 Hear the Lord said, don't look for love no more because they can't give you what you need, said God. I got a man of God that's raised, that know how to play music like you know how to play. That sings like you can preach the gospel of the kingdom, said God. Let it be a sign to you. If he can't play, he ain't yours, said God. He ain't yours, said God. But if you would put me first, you'll see that you'll be happy more than you ever. You don't have to stay in the place that you in because he'll have all the things that you need, said God. He'll take care of you just like Brother Leonard takes care of me, said God. You desire to have a man to love you for who you are, but you got to love me first, said God. And you'll see it come to pass. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Father, right now, Father, we touch and agree and we send your word to her dad's house, God. You know, I heard the Lord say they're going to be okay. I heard the Lord say they're going to come through this. Hallelujah. I heard the Lord say it's time. I'm finna save your daddy. I'm finna save him. He said, think not as strange when he walked through them doors. He said, it's time. I'm going to save him. He too got talents. He, been, he done held back for 50 something years and have not served me in the way he needed to serve me because of people and the things that he saw when he was a young man. But God said, right now, I'm going to save him. And he's going to come into this house and he's going to praise and magnify my name because of your faithfulness. I'm going to raise him up. Hey, yes. God said, it's time. It's time. Don't even worry about none of your brothers. Eric is running. He's running. He's running, said God. But I'm going to save him. He should have been dead, but because he stood in the gap. And you prayed. In the night hours, you prayed. He should have been gone but because of your faithfulness. And because of standing in the gap, I kept him. Oh, shut up. Shedding in the I see him in, in the house with his hands lifted up, praising and magnifying me. Oh, Lamaha. I see him going through a change even in his marriage. There's a change there, I see a change. A change of 
Damn, my God. But he, he's coming. I'm going to drive him in here. A lot of times he won't come because he feel like he'll be judged because of his appearance. But he's coming. And you will see. And I'm going to raise him up. And he too going to have a testimony. <sighs> Don't feel silly. Just love him. Just love him, said God. Just show forth the love of God like you've been. And you'll see. Sometimes you feel like you're the oldest. And you have to carry on all these responsibilities. People. But God said he's going to take that burden off of you. And it's time for you to be happy. Yes, God. It's time for you to be happy, said yes, God. God said you're going to be more happy than you ever been. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, shall I buy? He in the end, shall I buy? Even last Sunday when you kneeled before me, I saw the need of your heart and the burden of your heart, God. And I came down and I lifted that off of you. And even from that Sunday to this, your life hasn't been the same. Don't feel guilty because I'm going to make you happy. It's all for the ministry, said God. Women that's been torn and that's been judged and that's they call out their names. Too ashamed to lift up their face because of their things that they've been through. You'll be able to help them, save God. All the sufferings and the heartbreaks, you'll be able to help them. I heard the Lord said, just embrace them. Put your arms around them and let them know that God saves. He set free and he delivered. Judge him not, said God, but just love him. Hallelujah. And I tried you even three months ago. I tried you to see can you pass the test. And heard the Lord say, You've passed with blind colors. And I'm pleased, said God. I tried you to see where you break. I tried you to see where you look back. <laughs> oh, but you never broke, said God. And you stood the test. And I shall add many talents even unto you. Things that you say I'm not capable of doing. You're standing for my people and you'll do it, said God. Because of mercy. Because of compassion. And because of love, you'll do it says the Lord. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Turn this back on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Stand in the gap for my grandson, God, we Touch and agree, Father. God, that you keep him, Father. Lord, I had a dream a couple years ago when he went to Montgomery, God. That the devil tried to come in, Father, and just cause an accident. We stood in the gap, me and Paul, Paul, God. And God, to see him standing today, Father. It means so much to me, Father. God, I'm so proud of him, Father. And God, he too got to surrender to you, Father. He can't run. Sometimes they think the carols and the things of the world is more important than living for you, Father. But God, I ask you to save him, Father. God, give him some dreams and shake him over hell. Just like you did me, it worked for me, it can work for him, Father. Until I had an experience with you, I didn't know what Mama was talking about, Father. But God, I ask you to visit him, God, in dreams and in vision. Let him know that this thing is real, Father. And even when he go back to college, God, raise him up to be a preacher, Father. Raise him up to be a light. Even in the midst of all that darkness, God, raise him up. God, help him always do the right thing, Father. God, help him always to treat a, a young lady in a respectful way, Father. And be with him, God, and protect him from all harm or danger. God, bless his finances, God. God, bless him, God. You see his heart. Mm -hmm. God, you see his heart, Father. And God. Even his little sisters, God. Sometimes he worried about the safety of his sisters, Father. But God, let him know that they're going to be okay, God. 
God, you put a hedge around those girls and his mothers, even when they're in Florida, God. You be with them, God. God, so many things that he want to do for his mother, God. God, you give him the finances, God. You raise him up. Let him be at the right time, the right place at the right time, and bless his finances, God. And be with him. In Jesus' name we pray, God. God, let him surrender all to you, not part of you, Father, but all, God. God, he ain't too young or too, well, he can't live for you, Father. But raise him up to preach this gospel of the kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, Father. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Here the Lord said, just wait on me. He said, you'll know what to do when you don't know what to do. He said, just get in and seek him. For seven days that you said that you was going to seek his face. I see the devil just want to come in like a flood and just not only take over, but your kid's life will be affected by it. But God told me if you if you just seek him seven days and seven nights, that he'll come in, he'll live up a sin. All the things that you're going through and all the fights that you fight, God said he'll let him fight for you. Even in the midst of the fussing and the arguments, God said, don't fuss back. Hold your peace, said God. Let me do it, said God. The devil know that he's going to save and he's going to set free. And that's right before God does it, the devil comes in like a flood to make you doubt his word. But God said, just hold on just a little while longer and don't fuss. Don't argue. Walk away, said God. And seek me for seven days and fasting, praying. And I changed the whole atmosphere. He said, then you'll know what decision to make. He said, in the meanwhile, just hold tight. And hold your peace. Yes, God, I ask you to strengthen them right now. Because, Lord, sometimes without you, that is so hard to do, Father. Yes. God, it's so hard to do, Father. Give him the strength and the wisdom. The wisdom of Solomon, God. The wisdom surpassed the man's wisdom, God. So he'll know what to do with what they're saying. How to say Speaking that honorable voice, God. And let him know when to speak and when not, Father. And use him in a mighty way we pray. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you. How many appreciate the Lord? Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 Just want to make a quick enough for Brother Anthony to take up the offering. I need all the new adults to check your email. Because uh, your text, rather, I'm going to be sending out a text. Uh, we're going to definitely start doing a lot of training next year. Uh, so we can know how to testify, we can know how to speak. There's a lot of training that we have not done yet. We're just waiting for time uh, to, to let you know that we don't want to discourage you from testifying and speaking, but we do want to train you on how to do it. And there is a way to do those things, and we didn't want to just get you, tell you that up front because you get discouraged. And we don't want to discourage, we want to encourage. Amen. And so check your text. Because uh, we're going to ask you what day would be better for you. Because we're going to have training just about every month on different things. But check your text and please respond to it so we can know how to make plans as we move forward. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Brother Anthony.